Hi, I'm Ryan, a developer advocate at GrowthBook. If you develop a new feature and then deploy it to all of your users all over the world at the same time and then find there's a bug, that can be a catastrophe. It's better instead to roll out to a small group of users who are maybe internal to the company, designated beta testers who can help you find that bug before it spells chaos. While it may seem complex to set up these advanced targeting rules, so a feature only goes out to a small subset of users. GrowthBook's Saved Groups feature lets you do that easily and quickly. In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about saved groups so that you can ship features faster and more confidently. We are on the Split Bean page. Split Bean is a fictional coffee company, and this is a site I created to help visualize what's going on uh, in GrowthBook or with your GrowthBook uh, data. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, we can see that there's this indication that there's a feature flag here, but uh, there's nothing showing up. That's because this is a new uh, feature that the Split Bean Coffee Company wants to roll out. Uh, it's a set of reviews to show these reviews, and it wants to do that to see if it'll increase conversions on the site. Right now, it's off for everyone, but what we want to do is use saved groups to turn it on for some beta testers to make sure that everything looks okay. Maybe the styling's good on mobile, that sort of thing. So let's set up a saved group so that this is only on for internal beta testers. So let's hop on over to GrowthBook. So here I am in GrowthBook. To get to saved groups, you go to SDK configuration and saved groups. On this page, you'll notice that there are two kinds of saved groups. There are condition groups and ID lists. We're going to look at condition groups first, and then we'll take a look at ID lists. With saved groups, you target users based on their attributes. So to set up a saved group of internal beta testers in the US, Let's click on Add Condition Group. And so we'll call this our internal beta users in the US. Optionally, you can add a description. The Projects field allows you to scope the saved group to a particular project. So right now, we are scoping it to Split Bean, but I could remove this. Now it would be available on all projects. And projects are a great way in GrowthBook to organize different projects, as it says, but that could be like your mobile app, that could be different uh, marketing sites, that could be different properties you have. It makes it a nice way to keep everything clean and, and tidy. You can also add two projects. So this just gives you a lot of flexibility. This, of course, is for our split bean project. So let's keep it limited to that. The next part is to add your attributes. This is where you actually set up the conditions for the saved group. So the first thing that I want to do is keep it internal. So that means that I'm going to say that the company has to be equal to split bean. So this means that only users who have a company attribute set to split bean will be included in this group. Next, I only want to target beta users in that company. So I am going to set, set beta to true. And then finally, what I want to do is set this to only be active to our US region. So I'm going to have country equal to, type in here, United States. And now we have our saved group set up. As you can see, though, there is a lot more that you could add here, a lot more conditions. We also have an advanced mode if you want to get even more sophisticated in your uh, targeting attributes. But this works for what we want to do. So I'm going to click Submit to save it. So we have here now our internal beta users in the US. As your saved groups grow and your projects increase, we do have a search option here where you can search through your different saved groups to help you find them better. And as this list gets bigger, it will also become paginated to make things, again, more scalable and easy to use as, as, the, as your experiments and feature flags grow. We'll look at ID list next, but first let's see how we can actually implement the saved group that we created. All right, let's put our saved group to work. Um, I am going to jump on over to my feature flags. 
And so you can see here we have the feature flags that are active in the split bean um, project. At the bottom, I have my show reviews feature flag. This is the feature flag that uh, was shown earlier in the video. So let's click into this. And so what's important to notice here is that this feature flag is enabled, but the default value is false. So that means that whatever feature is behind this flag is going to be off for all users by default. And we want to now turn it on for only that subset of users. So I'm going to add a forced rule. Uh, I'm going to value that I'm going to force is true. So this means that whoever is included in this targeting, uh, they are going to see that this will be true. So I am going to add group targeting here. And I am going to select my internal beta users in the US. So as you can see here, you can add additional uh, saved groups, do a whole combination of them. And you can also target by other attributes. You can see that it's possible to target in other ways by attributes. So you could put in those same attributes here. An advantage of using saved groups though, is that if you need to update this saved group and it's used in several different features or experiments, you can go to save groups and centrally manage it. So you can make the update there and then it will populate everywhere else. Uh, whereas if you had done this individually, then you would have to go to each feature flag and make that change. So this is again, a nice way to keep everything uh, organized. All right, so I'm gonna click save and then I'm going to publish this new feature flag. I will add a little note to say that uh, roll out to beta users, publish it. So now this is live. All right, let's jump on over to our site and see this targeting in action. So I jump on over to my site here and we're going to scroll down. And as expected, the review feature is still not visible because this particular user is not in that saved group. Let's change that. So again, I created this site with some nice ways to, to help visualize and change this data. So these are the current attributes for the user who's on this page. So we need to change some things to make sure that they're in that saved group. So I'm gonna set this user to true in the beta. I'm gonna set their company to split bean, and I'm gonna set their country to the US. So now they satisfy those conditions for the saved group. Let's click save. Uh, the attributes are saved. And now let's come back to our homepage. And as we scroll down, nice. We see that those reviews are now visible because this user is in the saved group. As you can see, I didn't even need to refresh the page because growth books streaming is enabled, which updates the features in real time. All right, let's now jump back to ID lists to see how they work. The other flavor of saved groups are ID lists. ID lists allow you to supply a list of IDs either manually or through a CSV, and then that becomes your saved group. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to click add an ID list, and I'm gonna do again, just beta users. Again, you can scope that to your project of choice, and you need to choose your attribute key. So what you're going to supply a list of values. What do these apply to? So I'm going to say ID. And so as mentioned, you can do this manually. So if you just have a list of IDs you want to add manually, you can put that in the box here. Alternatively, you can import a CSV. And so for reference, let me just show you, this is what the CSV looks like. Um, it's just these values in, in a, a, you know, in a spreadsheet. And I'm going to import that here. It tells me now that there are 100 items ready to import, and I'm going to click Submit. And so now this ID list is created of beta users. I can click into it, and you can see that these are all my IDs. And I can search through them if I want to see if someone is included here. Let's see how then we could apply this to our split bean site. All right, let's go back to our show reviews feature flag, and I'm going to add another forced value. So uh, everything else is the same, but I'm going to now add our ID list we created, which was the beta users. And I am going to click save. So now we have these two rules in place for this feature flag. All right, so now I am going to review my changes. I will publish them. 
And let's then jump back over to our site. What I am going to do is first come here to attributes. I'm going to reset them. Let's go back to our home page and see what's going on. Uh, so these are still showing. What could be the reason there? Let's take a look at our attributes again and the ID. I'm going to copy that and go back to growth book. Let's go back to our saved group, our ID list, our users. Let's search this. Ah, so even though it was a random ID, it was included in our uh, ID list. So that's why it's being included. So let's let's try something here. Let's go back. Go back here. I have a way to randomize our user. So now we have a different ID. You can see that some of the experiments on the page changed. And then once again, the uh, show reviews section is no longer active. So now you have a good idea how uh, ID lists work. And there's one uh, little trick that I want to show you with ID lists. So let's come back over here. And you might have seen it. So in features, when I go to show reviews, let's see, let's add the force rule just again to see this. I'll add my uh, force rule. You can see that your SDK connection doesn't have pass save groups by reference enabled. So this is, it's giving me a warning that there's something I can do here. Let's see what that means. So I am in my SDK connection. This is the SDK connection I have set up for that split bean site. I will click in here and then go to edit, scroll down to the bottom. And you can see that there's this option down at the bottom of the uh, SDK connection to pass save groups by reference. And so I can toggle that on. And what this does is it, it, rather than passing that saved group, the raw values over and over again, it's going to pass it by reference. And that means that it's going to potentially reduce your SDK payload size and increase the speed of loading for your users. So this is a great option to toggle on if you're concerned about performance or if you're looking to improve performance and, and who isn't. So now we can enable this and click save. And this is now active on our SDK. That's it. You're now an expert in using saved groups in GrowthBook. They are a particularly powerful tool for setting up advanced targeting and making that manageable and scalable across your applications. Learn more about GrowthBook by visiting our docs or join us in our official forum where we talk, shop, answer questions, and help you on your experimentation journey.